I'm Steve from This Week With Cars, and today I am in my Overland 6x6 project. I'm getting ready to do some winter camping, and one thing in the winter is you require a whole lot more power than you do in the summer because you have to worry about heating your vehicle. Now, I do have the propane heater, which is over there. However, it's not working and the exhaust is leaking right now. So, I'm going to have to rely on electricity. And I haven't finished my full system yet because I installed the bare minimum that I need. I want to test everything, make sure that I'm going to be putting the correct components in here that I need. So, my next step is actually making the truck more efficient. And if you can see right now, I have these perimeter lights in here. And I have all of those on. Now those are running off 120 volts and I have this device hooked up right here that shows me how much power I'm using. So right now the lights are taking 262 watts of power. So if I turn them off, you'll see the power usage goes back down to zero. And I can also turn on just sing the single blue light. So you can see each one of these lights takes about 55 watts of power. Here it is back on with the five perimeter lights, taking 262 watts of power. So this means that if I am out in the dark, just having my lights on is going to use 262 watts of my power. And my inverter that I'm using is only good for 300 watts. So that means I can hardly turn anything else on. So what I'm going to do right now is take out the light bulbs and replace them with a high efficiency LED. These LEDs are going to use a fraction of the power and it's going to allow me to, instead of using all my power for my lighting, to be able to use it for all the rest of the things that I need to run inside the truck. So I'll get these installed and we'll check back and see how much power they use. Here is a look at the fixture with the old bulb installed. And here it is with the LED installed. As far as the light is concerned, you cannot tell the difference. I have all the bulbs replaced now. It's time to see how much power they're going to take. Looks like I'm down to 35 watts. So I am down more than 200 watts from where I was before. I'll switch over to the single bulb. That's the single blue bulb. And you can see each bulb takes about seven to eight watts of power. So that's a vast improvement. It's almost insignificant and I can power a whole lot more inside the vehicle now with these light bulbs. When you are using electric heaters and getting a lot of your power from solar, like I am here, I will show you just what a little ceramic heater like this will take for energy. Right now I'm using 33 watts just from my lighting and I'll flip on the heater. Okay, now my total usage is up to 360, 370 watts. So that doesn't leave a whole lot when you're using even a simple heater like this very tiny one right here. Now this little one will keep this truck warm, but obviously it will take a while to get up to temperature if the doors have been opened. It is coming down now as the elements are heating up. And right now with the lighting on and the heater running, I am under my 300 watt limit. And this inverter will surge to 600 for a short amount of time if it's needed to. I will be taking a generator with me as well. And my generator is rated for 1500 watts, but obviously the least amount of electricity that I'm using, the longer that the fuel in the generator will last. So the object of the game here is to make your rig as efficient as possible, especially if you're trying to boondock and use as much off of solar electricity as you can. I've decided to add a little bit of safety. This is a carbon monoxide detector, and especially with having the diesel heater in here, but it's really a good idea to have uh, one of these in any vehicle that you will be sleeping in just in case there is anything wrong with the engine when you're running it with an auxiliary heater or other cars around you. So I think I'm going to install it up in that corner over there and that'll be a good place for it to monitor. 
there we go. You can see there are zero parts per million of carbon monoxide in here right now. In a small vehicle like this, all of your power ports are in high demand. And instead of using up a power outlet for AC power for my USB, I've now mounted on one of these outlets. It has USB and power outlets built into it down here by the bed. That way I don't have to tie up one of my good outlets to use one of these USB adapters. Adding in a few of these power strips into your build might be really helpful to both get yourself a few more outlets as well as not having to use them up to create USB power. When I got this truck, it had this silly fire extinguisher mount. The fire extinguisher that was in it didn't even fit and I couldn't latch it. It was sitting up here, it was just riveted to this piece. And when the transmission exploded on me, if you haven't seen that video, here's a little clip and check it out later. You can see the damage there. It's broke almost clear off. When the transmission exploded on me, the mount for the fire extinguisher, uh, all the rivets broke and it fell off of where it was mounted up there. So I'm going to put on this beefier mount with a bigger fire extinguisher because really how much of a fire on this truck is this little one going to put out? And I think I'm going to mount it up here. Beneath the floor here is just shielding for the exhaust. So there's actually dual walls right there. It'd be a perfect place to mount this. So similar to a race car, I'm going to mount it up in the passenger footwell sideways, just like this. You'll be able to easily see if it's charged up, be easy to release. Uh, if I'm driving in, there's an issue. If I have a passenger, they can start getting it out and then clipped. But while I'm stopping the vehicle, I think this will be a really good place. So I'm gonna get this mounted right now. I've got it mounted. That's not gonna go anywhere. And this mount is does have these rubber pads. It has it underneath here as well. So once I've got this latched down, this is not gonna move anywhere. I shouldn't hear any vibration from it. Uh, I will hear this chain obviously, but not shouldn't have a whole lot of noise and it shouldn't be rubbing on anything. There it is latched in. As you can tell, it's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to move. And when someone opens the door from out here, you can very easily see where the fire extinguisher is. So if there's a fire, no one's around, someone that's not familiar with the truck just opens up the door, they'll be easily able to see that and use it. Another quick upgrade that I want to do is change this jerry can holder. So the jerry can would sit in here and you'd actually have a canvas strap that went over the top of the jerry can and that held it in. I want to replace it with this one. This one has a metal strap which will go over the can. And the good thing about this one is it does have a spot over here that I can put a padlock in it or something else to lock it in a more secure way than just having a strap on it. So I'm just gonna pull this one off and mount this one on real quick. Okay, six bolts held the old one on. Now there is a door here. This is the utility storage area. So I need to make sure that my new container doesn't block this door from opening because it is a very handy thing to store your wheel chocks and uh, jumper cables and other things in there. Just setting the new one on there. You can see the door does open. Does open to about 90 degrees. So I think that will work. I'll just get this one bolted in. And there it is. It's mounted by six points, just like the original. Very sturdy. I don't think the can is going to fall out. I am just using a wing nut right now, but I will find a padlock that fits that. You will have to Always have this locked, otherwise this will come loose. I imagine the can, when it's full, wouldn't be able to fall out because of the way this tray is built, but still you wouldn't want that to come unlatched and lose that. And of course, my utility door opens, no problem. And I don't think it looks out of place. I will be able to use this can for either diesel to run the engine on the truck or gasoline to run a generator. A lot of people with trucks like this put waste motor oil in there. That way if it gets stolen, you know, you don't lose it much. And you can also run this engine on waste motor oil. So 
it's a plus plus there. Another very important thing, of course, is does the door clear? And of course, it's just mounted where it originally was, so there is room. The top of this is not take up hardly room, any room at all, so no problem clearing the door. Well, that's it for today. I am really excited about the winter camping trip I have coming up. There'll be a lot of different off-roader uh, vehicles and camping rigs, so we'll see what shows up. Also, I, it's uh, two weeks from now, so I don't know what the weather's going to be like. We could wake up, could have lots of snow, could be very cold. Be a real test of this vehicle. I'm really comfortable where this truck is at right now as far as a baseline. It's now completely usable for any situation, really, as far as being a bare bones rig. The next thing I need to do is concentrate on storage as well as making it into a legal motorhome. This is not yet to the state where it would be considered a legal motorhome in the state that I live in. So next time I need to concentrate on making sure that this will meet all those rules. If you wanna see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.